welcome back in this lecture i will complete the characterization of polymers module and i will discuss about mass spectroscopy of polymers and chemical characterization so in this lecture i will talk about mass spectroscopy of polymers specifically malditoff ms and chemical characterization will be restricted to nmr methods in general mass spectroscopy involves study of mass of ions created by ionization of fragmentation i mean ionization or fragmentation and determine electrically at the gas phase and this spectrum in this mass spectroscopy is a plot of ion abundance against mass to charge ratio or in simple we call m by z conventional mass spectrometer for low molecular weight compounds the energy of the electron beam used is about 8 to 13 electron volts now in case of polymer if we use this large electron beam to fragment polymer might degrade before vaporization now that will complicate the situation further in case of small molecule small organic molecules we know that all the molecules have same molecular weight so if if we fragment the larger fragment will be of course coming from the molecular weight itself the entire whole molecule itself but in case of polymer the sample consists of anyway many molecular weight polymer chains so if you fragment a particular polymer then we don't know whether that fragment is because of fragmentation of a polymer chain or it is present originally in the polymer mixture so use of mass spectroscopy in polymer need to be such a way that the polymer sample should not be get fragmented during the measurement we should be able to measure the molecular ion or the entire polymer mass of the entire polymer chain so that we can get the size of the entire mixture of polymer molecules for that modified mass spectrophotometer are used for synthetic polymers in this case soft ionization is done and that is done using a matrix so we call matrix assisted laser desorption ionization i'll discuss in little detail this process and the time between detector and the origin is actually measured that is why we call time of flight tof and the price of this mass spectrometer is much higher com compared to the conventional mass spectrometer which are used for determining the molecular weight of small organic molecules so in short we call this as malditoff ms now as i discuss that in this case we cannot fragment the polymer chain so if soft ionization is required for that a dilute solution of polymer sample is mixed with a more concentrated matrix solution and the typical matrices are organic aromatic organic acids and small aliquot of this mixture is applied to the maldi plate and it solidifies as the solvent evaporates once solvent is evaporated we have the mixture of polymer sample and the matrix now the plate plate is placed in the source of mass spectrometer and short pulse of high energy laser irradiates the target that means this mixture by irradiating 
it actually vaporizes the matrix. Now, once the matrix vaporizes, it carries the polymer which was immersed in this matrix. So, it takes the polymer in vapor phase and in the vapor phase, the matrix gets dissolved from the polymer molecules. So, we have the polymer molecules in vapor phase and polymers molecules need to be charged so that it can move under electric field. So, neutral polymers are ionized by protons or small cations like sodium, potassium or silver ion. So, once we generate this charged molecular ions, then we apply a detector and the time it takes to move from the source to the detector is what determined and we call this is the time of flight. And obviously, the time will be taken more by the larger molecular weight than the smaller molecular ions. So, ions are formed in pulses and all molecular ions follow exactly the same path to the detector and the detector measures the time for the ions to reach the detector that is why the term time of flight is, is used for this technique. So, this is a typical multi spectra, multi top spectra for low molecular PMMA. This technique is mostly used for useful for low molecular samples because if the molecules are very large or high molecular sample, then using a proper matrix to carry them to the vapor phase is difficult. Hence, it is mostly useful for low molecular sample, but it does not mean that it cannot be used for high molecular weight using proper matrix and trial and error method it is possible to use this technique for high molecular weight as well. This is example of multi stop spectra for low molecular PMA and in this case you can see that difference between two molecular ion is 100 which is the molecular weight of the repeat unit of PMMA. This confirm that this spectra is from PMMA and from this distribution we can get the values from MN, MW and so on. So, the matrix material is very critical in this technique and needs to be optimized for each polymer that is the disadvantage that it, there is not general rule that there are some guideline or some um, kind of uh, uh, guideline from prior experience, but there is no hard and first rule that the particular matrix would be used for a particular polymer and so on. And uniform solid solution with the polymer and the sol has to be there. The it has to strong the matrix has to strongly absorb the laser in that particular wavelength and it also give rapid vaporization. The sol for catenation also need to be selected based on polymer structure. Generally, polyester, polyamides, polyacrylate, sodium ion, potassium ion used more hydrophobic polyestyrene, polybutyrene, silver ions are used. Polyethylene, polypropylene they are very difficult to ionize using this technique. So, it is not very this technique is not very useful for determining the molecular weight of polyethylene, polypropylene. And uh, some cases the solubility of the polymers are not good in solvent which need to be used for making a mixture with the matrix. So, that is uh, a difficult. So, this technique is not useful for that uh, those polymers. And solvent must evaporate quickly to give a uniform mixture. And these are typical example of the matrix which are used for this uh, technique. 
Next, I will move to the chemical analysis of polymer using NMR. There are other spectroscopic technique like UV visible and infrared spectroscopy which can be used to do chemical analysis, but the use of NMR is much more practical and much more useful because use of IR and UV visible spectra is very limited. These are limited to determine the functional groups or chromophores present in the polymer molecule itself. Now, those of you do not know NMR spectroscopy, this is just a quick uh, basic uh, guideline that NMR is about the transitions between magnetic energy levels of a molecule and the thumb rule is that which type of molecules are NMR active that only nuclei with spin number which is labeled as I not equals to 0, they can absorb and emit electromagnetic radiation and atoms which have even atomic mass and number, they are not anymore active because their I is 0 like carbon 12 and oxygen 16, those are the most abundant atoms in carbon and oxygen. Whereas, odd atomic mass gives you I is equal to half integers, they are very common, they are useful for NMR spectroscopy like proton, carbon 13, nitrogen 15, phosphorus 31 or even atomic mass and odd number that gives you whole integer like nitrogen 14, this can be also used for your NMR spectroscopy. And these are the parameter which we obtain from a NMR spectrum and this is just again this is a simple guideline for those who are not very habituated with NMR spectrum. The number of signals or peak in a spectrum is related to number of equivalent group of atoms. For example, number of equivalent protons or carbon 13 present in that molecule. The frequency or the ppm of the signal that means the place where it is appearing, the position of the signal is related to the chemical environment around that atom. The intensity of the signal is related to the number of atoms that are contributing to the signal. The line splitting of the signal gives information about the neighbor and line shape, the peak line shape gives information about the interaction with solvent and there are some specific or uh, specialized techniques are used which are not very common, but they are uh, special used for special purpose, relaxation time T1, T2, information about polymer dynamics and NOE which gives you the information about the special arrangement of atoms which helps us to find out the conformation, polymer conformation and so on. We can use NMR spectroscopy uh, in a, NMR spectroscopy is actually used in great detail to identify the polymer and the functional groups which can be used to monitor the progress of polymerization process. It can be used to find out the tacticity, whether it is a syndiotactic, isotactic or atactic polymer. It can be used for determining copolymer composition, chain molecular structure in copolymer, whether it is a random copolymer, alternating copolymer, block copolymer. And it can be also used to find out the end groups and also it can be if there are in groups are um, basically uh, as we mentioned in earlier uh, class, earlier lecture that if the in groups are having some attributes then we can use this in group analysis by NMR to determine the molecular weight MN, number average molecular weight as well. 
This is example of PMMA NMR spectra and if you see this structure there are, this is a proton, proton NMR spectrum. So, we will only concentrate on the protons. There are three types of protons present in this molecule one here two protons and this is three protons and again three protons. So, they will have three different peaks. So, this peak is here, this is here all three and this is here. Now, this methyl can have different stereo arrangement in relative to the next repeat unit. Remember we talked about different possibilities syn diatactic where the arrangement stereo arrangement is same the uh, alternate isotactic when the stereo arrangements are same and atactic where there is no particular order of stereo arrangement. Now, in a particular sample it may not be the case that we have exclusive arrangement of syndiatacticity or atacticity or um, isotacticity. By comparing this intensity of this signal which corresponds to one particular arrangement like RR corresponds to syndiatactic, MM corresponds to isotacticity, this corresponds to atacticity. In that case we can actually find out what is the extent of tacticity. For example, in this particular sample the contribution of RR is much higher which means that this particular sample is predominantly seen diatectic in nature. Now, I have discussed this earlier how to use n group analysis using NMR to determine molecular weight. So, I will not go through this in detail just recall that in this particular polymer uh, as I explained earlier the molecular weight was found to be 8500 and number of this n isopropyl acrylamide unit or the value of n was found to be around 75 and this was done by comparing the signal of this particular proton here a proton which is exclusive to this monomer to the protons present in this n group and by comparing this intensities of these two protons type of protons we can get the value of n and hence the molecular weight which I discussed earlier. Now, we can use a similar technique to find out the copolymer composition. Now, in this case we have added a second block dimethyl amino ethyl meth acrylate. So, this is the second monomer which we added after the first block was synthesized to make a block copolymer. So, in this this is a block copolymer of dimethyl amino ethyl meth acrylate in short DMEMA and poly N isopropyl acrylamide as we discussed here. Now, this D proton which has signal here, this signal at around 4.06 it has contribution from this proton as well as this protons, two protons from this unit and one proton from this unit. Whereas, this peak at 2.3 correspond to, corresponds to this 6 
methyl protons and this peak at 2.6 corresponds to this 2 B protons. Now, you can also see that the 6.6 .6 protons give you a intensity around 3 whereas, 2 protons give you a intensity around 1 which basically kind of satisfy the internal calibration though it is not perfect, but it is nearly same. So, in this combine this signal which is contribution from both this monomer this proton d proton as well as a proton we can use this signal to find out the composition of this polymer. So, in this case the intensity value is 1.35. Now, per proton we have seen we should get 0.5 as a signal. So, for the two protons here we should get a signal corresponds to 1. So, rest 0.35 must be coming from this proton. So, 0.35 contribution from this proton and 1 coming from this proton. Hence, the ratio by mole by number between these two repeat unit or the ratio of m and m must be 0.5 is to 0.35 or the degree of polymerization of this particular unit would be 0.5 into 75 divided by 0.35 because 75 is the value of n which we have determined in last slide. Hence, the number of units of this particular unit is about 107 or the value of m is 107. So, this is the example how NMR can be used for to determine the composition. Now, this is uh, for block copolymer we can use the same technique to find out the composition in case of random copolymer or other types of copolymer provided we need to have exclusive peaks for different monomers. We can use carbon uh, 13 NMR to find out the type of copolymer. For example, this is a carbon 13 NMR for polycarbonate, bisphenol A polycarbonate and each of these carbon are marked here. The carbon peak which is interesting to find out the type of copolymer is A which is shown here which will be utilized to find out what is the nature of copolymer. So, in this case we have a copolymer of bisphenol A and this monomer. Now, there is a three possibility in this case. If these two monomeric unit bisphenol and they sit next to each other or they contribute to form this carbonate linkage, then this carbon will have different value than a combination of bisphenol A and bisphenol A or this particular monomer with this particular monomer. So, from the value of intensity of this carbon signal, we can get what is the arrangement, what is the extent of arrangement of this kind or this kind or this kind in a copolymer. Now, in a statistical sense, if there is no bias between any of this arrangement, then because there is two way it can be formed, this should have weightage of 0.5, this will be 0.25 and this will have 0.25. In case the copolymerization is formed from a 1 is to 1 mixture of these two monomer and there is no bias. But in this particular case, we have used say 1 is to 1 
two monomers which are used in 1 is to 1 by mole and here this is one exam one sample in this case this sample correspond this carbon has two this is one and this is one which means the ratio of intensity in these two cases is one is to one is one is to two is to one which means in this particular sample this is a perfect random copolymer of these two polymers these two monomers whereas in this case you can see that the signal of this particular carbon is lower compared to either of this or this hence this sum in this particular sample we can conclude that the chances or probability of block formation that means one particular monomer is sitting next to same monomer is much high we can actually compare quantitatively by finding out the ratio of these signal intensities. So, this is not a random copolymer. So, by using this NMR technique we can find out whether the two, mono, two monomer actually produces a random copolymer or a non-random blocky type copolymer. So, with this what uh, we have kind of completed the characterization model and if you remember the two main two types of characterization we have done. One is molecular structure where we determine the chain dimension and molecular weight of the polymers and we have found out the identify identity of the polymer mainly using NMR techniques. I have not gone through the other techniques which can be used to find out the microstructure more it is a possibility that we can use the other techniques to find out the microstructure. With this I we will conclude this lecture and uh, in next lecture I will start a different module on polymer uh, properties.